the Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world. Hello and welcome to the Dim Din Podcast, your very safe space to have conversations about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations in the African community, especially to those of us here in the diaspora. I am your host, Becca, aka the Syrianadian. Today, uh, we are going to discuss another interesting but relevant conversation uh, around frustrations that we experience here in the diaspora. To have this conversation with me today, I have two beautiful ladies, Joyce, who has a Liberian background, but also a Canadian, and um, Natu, who has a Tanzanian background, but also a Canadian. I'm going to pass it over to them to introduce themselves, and then I'll introduce to you the topic of the day. Over to you, Natu. Thank you for having me, Joyce. My name is Natu Maliondo, but I go by Natu. Mm -hmm. As Joyce mentioned, I am Canadian Tanzanian. I was born in Canada, mm -hmm. and but I was raised in Tanzania, so I'm privileged to call both places home. Mm -hmm. um, when I introduce myself I try to shy away from professional backgrounds because they always change I am a daughter I am a sister a mumty not an auntie mumty <laughs> and a friend <laughs> and yeah that's that's it about me um, in terms of interests I love to dance I love to eat I'm so happy that we have food here <laughs> because this discussion is gonna get interesting <laughs> <We're before laughs> the, and yeah and professionally I am a civil servant I work in international trade and I'm very, very delighted to be in this podcast. Thank you for having me. Beautiful. Thank you for being here. Over to you, Joyce. Hi, Joyce. <laughs> 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 well, I'm also Joyce, and I'm <laughs> Liberian. Um, born in Liberia, raised there, and moved over to Canada, so now I'm Canadian. And I, um, I have a son. I have a beautiful boy. I am a hairstylist and a makeup artist here in Edmonton, Alberta for the last 10 years. And yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Beautiful. And they just gave me the name Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I did Becca. not know your name. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take it because I have a few other names. <laughs> okay, so down to the topic of the day. We are here today to discuss the frustrations around the weight. You heard me right, the weight. If you're human, you have had a moment in your life where you've had to wait for something. It could be a job, you've interviewed for that job and you're waiting to know whether or not you got the job or you're searching for a job. And for those of us who are at that age, it could be waiting for the right spouse or you found the one and you're waiting for that child. There is different weights that we all have had to go through at different points of our lives. But we're going to narrow this down today to the weights of beating that biological clock in the female section mm -hmm. to find the one, get married, have your child, mm -hmm. and, and live happily ever after. Mm. Okay. Interesting topic, hey? I know. So we're going to pass this on today. So do you want to go first on this? Just to tell us a little bit about the weight that you're at right now, like the waiting period that you're at, some of the frustrations surrounding that. Just give, a, just give us a little bit of where that's at for you right now. Certainly, certainly. Um, so I consider this a season. I think it's a very temporary season, um, even though it's been a very long temporary <laughs> season. <laughs> if you had asked me at 25, I'll be here, I'll tell you, mm -mm. <laughs> So I am single. Mm -hmm. I ha I, I'm yet to be blessed to have a child, but I think that child is coming at some point, Amen. a child or two. Mm -hmm. um, I'm yet to have a husband, but I think that husband is coming too. <laughs> So um, the season right now, the weight is those particularly two particular things. And I, 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 when I turn 39, I'm going to be turning 40 next year. But when I turn no, 38, I think it's when the time that I, when I felt the frustration of 
you know what? I'm not married. I don't have kids. And it was a somber moment, I'd say, of like maybe a month or two. But somewhere there, I had to shift my mindset. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do during the wait? You don't, you can't control what God has given you. Mm -hmm. You can't control the timelines. So for me, I decided that, you know what? I'm going to continue living my life. Being single is not a curse. Ooh. Be Say that again, please. Being <laughs> single is not a curse. Yes. You hear me out. Mm -hmm. I'm 39, living my life. I'm mm. pursuing my career. I'm making sure that um, my finances are in order because I know when those kids come, my finances are going to be running dry. But <laughs> God will provide. <laughs> and I wanna also want to make sure that uh, by the time the husband finds me, I'm also in the best shape of my life. Ooh. Not just physically, mentally, spiritually. I so this that. Yes. This seasonal weight for me is more of a preparation, mm. um, more of, there's that anticipation, but most importantly, working on myself and making sure that um, I'm ready when the time comes. Sure. Uh, I've learned to be very patient with God's timing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not the not most- an easy thing to do. I'm not the most patient <laughs> person. I can talk about the frustrations, but right now I'll talk about the positive things, but mm -hmm. I'll hand over the mic to my <laughs> sister, Joyce. <laughs> over to you, Joyce. <sighs> Yes. That's, uh, that's a tough one because I feel like my whole life is on the opposite end of everybody else. Mm. I met my son dad when I was 15 and I spent 16 years with him. Ooh. Oh. Okay, so usually it's like you attain, you, then you go to school, then you get an education, then you wait for the perfect man and you get married. I did it the opposite way. <laughs> 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 when the opposite route, when I was supposed to be running around playing cops, I was married. <laughs> <laughs> so now with how we are as Africans and how our mind is set up, I'm supposed to be kind of desperate and in a rush to find a man, get married. In my mind, I'm 50, you know? Mm. So it's a little bit different in my situation because mm. like the pressure was super high when I was super young. Mm. So now that I'm learning to do things on my own pace and like follow my heart and stuff like that, I don't feel pressed. I just, I just don't. I do things that crosses my mind. I'm happy with myself. When I meet somebody, I give it my all. If it don't work, I don't stress there. I keep it pushing because like I've learned a lot throughout my single life and that's like for the last seven years. Everything that I thought on doing, I've done 80%. Amazing, Ooh. right? I've done 80%, 80 and for me to be able to do so in our environment as a black woman, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be challenging, but therapy, therapy is something. Mm -hmm. I went to therapy, I go help. Every time I feel stuck, I go back. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's a lifestyle now to check myself in and, and like make sure that my peace is 100% because mm -hmm. it's a need. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. We are off to a great start. I tell you the wait. What is your waiting period? What are you waiting for? As you've had our sisters say, you are in that period where you are waiting for that husband mm. and your children, children and yes. that period is not quite here yet but you are also hopeful i'm hopeful and you're you. praying and that praying. god's timing is yes. perfect absolutely and you are in that period where it's it's like a switch around for you when you were younger yeah you felt the pressure to get all those things right and you you've moved through that phase. And now that you are able to make decisions on your own, you are like, I'm a free spirit. Exactly. And I've got to be a free and, spirit. And understanding the importance of knowing oneself. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's you know? where we're coming. <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm fully aware of who I am. I'm fully aware of what I want. Mm -hmm. I respect differences. So if something don't work, it's not hate, it's not anger, it's not. Mm. And therapy did all of that for me. So if something don't work, I can see people struggling with me and saying like, so you don't want to fix it? Well, it's nothing to fix. I see how you are. I mm -hmm. see how I am. It's just, it doesn't, it's not gonna it doesn't work. Is. So I move. The vibe is not vibe. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, so I keep it pushing. Like, do I want that again? I see marriage and everything else. Yes, I do, but I'm not pressed. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm mm -hmm. not, I block my ears to the whole 
African clock, so sure. honestly. Ooh, I, I, there's I an African to. clock. Mm -hmm. There's an African clock. Okay. I learned it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I love, like you both have touched on where I want to take this next. And that is like, actually, before we go to the present moment, I feel like, especially those of us who were raised mm. in our different parts of Africa, there is almost like one way to do things mm. it's like this whole thing of like you reach a certain age you meet the right man you get married they your patient after, once yeah. you get married your your name changes to patient because it's the woman's responsibility mm. i tell you mm -hmm. to keep that going mm -hmm. right it's sort of normal mm -hmm. in our countries of birth because that's like the way everybody sort of like follows through mm -hmm. it's like it's like that trajectory that we follow but once we migrate to this side of the world, it's such a diverse sort of like part of the world that you get to learn a little bit of different things from different cultures and the way people do things. And there is this whole thing about being independent. Mm -hmm. You can do it on your own. You don't necessarily need <laughs> a man. <laughs> All this other language in that we hear. Mm -hmm. What would you, like what can you say in that regard, like to that regard of the, the difference of like coming here and seeing things differently, is that affecting us necessarily mm. as black women here in the diaspora? That's a very good question. I think there's, with everything, there's, there's good and there's bad. Okay. Um, having been raised in Tanzania during my formative years, I was there until I was 18 and I still frequent there, I visit quite often. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good things that I learned from that culture. However, there's also a lot of things that I've had to shed over the years. To my sister's Joyce point, the African clock, you have to be married by maybe 25. I remember my own grandfather telling me by the time I think I turned 27, he was like, my dear, um, your market value, he's always an accountant. <laughs> Value is going down. <laughs> he was very particular about a tribe that I should be married to, <laughs> and by 27 he was like, you know oh. what? It's fine. Bring me anybody. So you had to share those um, social constructs. So there was positives that I carried, but there's things that I had to let go. Same for the um, Canadian culture. I've been here as an adult for almost 21 years now. There's good things that I've learned. There's cultures that you've assimilated. However, there's things that I think my friends will say I'm very um, African to the core to a certain extent. There's things I just nobody necessarily assimilate. I believe in independence. However, I also believe a woman has a role to play, a man has a role to Beautiful. play. Yes. So I, I have that aspect of my African culture I have not shared yet. I pay my bills. Um, I'm responsible for myself, but I'm not trying to compete with a man. A man has a position. Ooh, yes. A man is that. a man. I am a woman. That. I play my role. It, but it, I, I have to admit, though, when I was in my 20s, <laughs> I did go through that phase. I sang that independent woman by in, uh, <laughs> Destiny's Child, and then in my 30s, I was like, <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mm -mm. <laughs> so I, for me, I think if I had to summarize it, I think there's positives that I've carried mm -hmm. from Tanzania. Mm -hmm. um, and there's things that I've shared over the years. I'm like, no, nah, this just doesn't work for me. And there's also things in this culture that I'm like, you know what? I like that people here abroad at 18 years, you're being sent out. Like, go fend for yourself. Mm -hmm. I was under my parents' uh, protection until I left Canada. Uh, sorry, left to come to Canada. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to hear perspective from <laughs> <laughs> She is also my dear hairdresser. So we, we have these conversations every now and then. I love conversations <laughs> like this. Uh, I do. Okay. So on, on your part, like what I would, would like to hear, because you've really touched very well on that piece of like, I feel like I was there too once upon a time mm. where I was like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I, I can take care of myself. <laughs> like, and, and to be honest, sometimes I feel that way, like mm -hmm. even now, right? Because it's like that piece of when you are in the relationship sometimes, the stressors that you have to deal with, mm. it's like, do I really need this? <laughs> 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 You're supposed like, to be adding to my life. Why yes. do I feel so <laughs> trash? Why, why are you adding <laughs> so much? Why are you taking away? behind. Yeah. No, please. I want to go back to that 
Miss Independent Me. But that's where I want to bring it, um, or I want you to take it, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at that internal, because there's the external pressure for sure, no mm -hmm. doubt, right? There's the African clock, no doubt. But I feel like internally, we also go through so much. Mm. There's so much self-doubt sometimes. I feel like sometimes the voice on the inside I is even louder mm -hmm. than the external voices. What has that experience been like for you coming to where you're at right now, where you feel this sense of peace and freedom to just do as you will? That's a great question. Well, I have always been bold in a sense even when I didn't know myself fully, mm. Mm. right? Mm -hmm. And if our African surroundings they didn't teach us to tame ourselves as, as black women and like, oh, you t you're a little too much. Mm. I don't know how I would have been at this age <laughs> <laughs> but because I was kind of tamed for so long, mm. <sighs> right? You had enough. And naturally, those things will happen. And I remember my mom going off when I separated from my son, dad, and my dad's quiet. So she went off for a few days, and I, and I asked my dad, why are you quiet? He said, he said it's sad, looking at you at this point in all this confusion that your mom don't understand. I do. You didn't have a childhood. Oh. You didn't have a childhood. Like, there was war in our country when I was five. And then I've been a refugee for my whole life, most of it my childhood. And then... I got married, <laughs> mm. so I didn't have the chance to play. So when he see me now being this person, he's like, I'm happy you're alive and you're not doing anything illegal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important part. You run a business, you're very independent, you know yourself, and I'm, that said, I'm happy. If you bring me somebody, I take. Mm -hmm. And if not, I'm not questioning anything because you've tried. Mm -hmm. So, my dad, I love him so much. <laughs> He's just like, it just like calms me down because like my inner voice is speaking to me as to what I want, but then there's everybody else that's in friends, mm. family members, like calm down, find another man in two weeks. Mm. You need to get married. Your son's old. This, that, that, that. And that's not what, that's not what I feel inside. You know, so, so you feel the always, I'm oh, always on the opposite. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I love to travel, and I, I had the chance to do that after I Oh, separated. I see those photos. <laughs> right? Oh. But those are things that I've always thought about. Mm -hmm. Right? But it just didn't happen. So now I'm just, if I find somebody and I, I have that connection, I put in 100. Mm. Mm. If it don't work, respectfully, I move back and I keep it pushing. Mm. Respectfully. Respectfully. Keep it pee. It's <laughs> not war after separation. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of us believe that I'm supposed to hate you mm -hmm. because we didn't work. It could be something as simple as you, you're affectionate and I'm not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You want a different We're different. <laughs> yeah. It don't work. And that doesn't make either one of you a bad We're not person. wrong. You're not wrong. I'm right. not wrong. It's just it doesn't work. Right. Right. And I take that energy with friends, family members, partners. If <coughs> something don't work, I don't feel it in type of way. Mm. I love that. Yeah. That that must keep you keep your heart and mind so free because you're not holding on to unnecessary keep in mind, honey, baggages. Your peace and your happiness, you're responsible for Ooh. it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else outside of you. Not Ooh, your child, preach. not your parents, not your partner. It's on you. Preach. Ooh. So take I that and that. run. <laughs> I love that. I'm taking that. Um, and I think that part where you said, um, like that part about we don't have to go away hating each other, right? Mm. I've always thought about this. Like, we sometimes end up experimenting so much that... <laughs> <laughs> When we actually get to that place where you're settling down with someone, you're like, I want a little bit of all of mm -hmm. <laughs> A little here. bit of all the <laughs> personalities that you collected. <laughs> but no, that's not doable. But what I also think is that we're so, such like um, relational beings. Mm. I find it's even with our sisters sometimes. 
Because sometimes it's like, oh, if I know someone that you've been with, mm -hmm. you become that target for me. Or s like some girls will think that mm. way, right? But it's like you're losing so many relationships in the process mm. because you're choosing to think a way that does not align with humanity and peace and love, right? Maybe that person that you dated, maybe that 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 was not even God's intention for you. Absolutely. <laughs> that Open was the whole thing, thing right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that that was like a like a like a romantic relationship was not in God's plan for you mm -hmm. for that person. But you went ahead and say, Creator, I know you're <laughs> looking, <laughs> but here is my plan. <laughs> it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. And now instead of allowing yourself to understand what God's plan is for you and that person. You again go ahead and put that person in like a bank of, I want nothing to do with you. Mm. You break, you broke my heart and you've hurt me and stuff like that. So I really like that piece that you said about, it's our responsibility it to is. find that peace and that love and take care of ourselves. It is right. But I want to bring it to the present moment because mm -hmm. we have a tendency of either getting stuck in the past. Mm. It's everybody else's fault. Mm -hmm. My mom did this. My dad did this. Mm -hmm. My ancestors did this. My village people did this. Every <laughs> time <laughs> <laughs> in the whole village. <laughs> whole village. They're after. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Or the future. I want this. Mm -hmm. I want that. I want that. I want that. We tend to lose sight of where we're at. Yep. Right now. Today. Mm -hmm. The blessings that are surrounded or that are surrounding us today. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that present moment a little bit yes. and the beauty? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Living in the present. <laughs> Can we talk about the present and how do we stay in the present moment? Mm. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> for me, mm -hmm. I always have plan A, B, and C. Okay. Mm. One major thing I took from my first therapy section is going there and throwing all my, this person, exactly what you said, that person mm. did this, 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 and this. I think she was Congolese. Mm -hmm. My first therapist was Congolese. Okay. She's like, what did you do? Mm. Ooh. And I said, nothing. And mm. at the time I was talking about my marriage and mm -hmm. she's like, you spent 16 years, right? I said, yeah. She's mm. like, why? could not answer that question because for the first time I was held accountable for my part mm. Mm. and I didn't know how to deal with that because that's not something I learned mm -hmm. that we're not taught that no. right mm -hmm. so yeah I am just lost like oh I, I okay I, I didn't think I didn't think <laughs> 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 so she's like go think about it I'll see you in two weeks and come back with something and then I realized Oh my God, I sat there. Mm -hmm. That was your choice. I stayed. Mm -hmm. I wasn't forced. <laughs> you were not held hostage. And for the first time, I was able to tell that, you know what? I stayed. Mm -hmm. She's like, exactly. Mm. A lot of things that happen to you, you have to allow. Mm. Mm. And I carry that with me every day. A lot of things that happen to us, we allow. Mm -hmm. You have a role in it. You do. So if we can start taking accountability for some stuff, maybe life will be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And that's why now when something don't work, I'm not mad. Mm. Unless somebody try to harm me. Mm -hmm. That's the only time I will flip. But if it's a clear understanding that he likes day, I like night, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Have a it was nice like meeting you. you. My history with you will forever be remembered. And I respect you for that. I keep it pushing. Again, that's with relationship, family, even girlfriends. I walk out of a relationship easy. Like, uh, we're not doing no dramatic stuff, nothing. No. I just excuse myself from your life, and I wish you well. You I just don't want to be a part of it. Beautiful. Yeah. So for you, then, it is making peace with the fact that you have choices, mm -hmm. and you also play a role in whatever narrative exactly. mm -hmm. you find yourself or you found yourself my dad would always tell me focusing on what the other person did does not change nothing because mm. you no. cannot change the other person no yep. and you cannot change their actions no right but focusing on what you did has a better outcome for you mm -hmm. exactly. because then you can make changes in your be best interest and mm -hmm. become right. a better version 
Absolutely. of you. Learn a little bit more about yourself. So instead of asking what the other person did, always bring it back to yourself and Thank ask you Patricia. Did what role did you play? <laughs> Patricia or Joyce, depending my on who life you on a daily. What role did you play in all of that? Yeah. So that's a really good one, which I think us Africans, and I'll say this, even though this is social media and I probably will get bitten, like bitten <laughs> for this, but I think we struggle to take responsibility. Yeah. I think that's a big Accountability piece is a that must. we struggle with. Taking responsibility, even when it comes to making decisions, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like you want everybody to tell you what to do so that when something goes wrong, you, you have can everybody, blame everybody to else. come back yeah. to you and say it was your fault, right? So I think that's a big piece. So what you're saying then to stay in the moment, we have to learn to take accountability, a.k.a. <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> yes. Over yes. to you, Natu. Can you please add to that? Who? I, f I, I feel like I'm going to sound like a broken record because she said it really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, I have dabbed in therapy here and there over the years, but this year I've been very serious about it. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the first things my therapist had said is the same thing. I was always the victim. They did this to me. They did that to me. And my therapist was like, well, I look at the pattern of men that you pick. It's different <laughs> complexions, <laughs> different nationalities. Same person. That's the same person. <laughs> so, I mean, at the end of the day, you you got to be very self-aware. So I'd probably dial back a little bit. I don't believe in living in the past, but I believe in revisiting the past to understand how does it affect your choices. Exactly. What has, what has happened in your past that has led you into attracting the same type of man, going to the same type of relationships, wanting people who are emotionally available, unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> So I think for me, that was the key thing. Therapy really helped with that and also prayer. I mean, I, I, I always say, I, sometimes trying to be there, your own GPS doesn't help. Mm -hmm. you, you, got, you gotta pray to God, but God doesn't help people, those who don't help themselves. That's so right. being in the present and what happened in the past happened in the past. What are you doing right now? The relationship failed. I, I am like Joyce. I do not stay friends with, uh, sorry, I do not stay enemies with exes. Mm -hmm. If it does not work out, fine. We're not going to be best of buddies, but I'll probably contribute to your wedding. <laughs> I could <probably laughs> buy you a wedding gift. Would you go? Um, I don't know about that. I it's would. Very, mm, I don't, I don't I, know. I would. I don't know. I, it Me, depends I, how I will go. Okay. Depending on how I emotionally go. invested. Yes, if, and I get if it was invited, 10 years, maybe five years. <laughs> But a uh, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I give you a gift, but I don't know about attending your wedding. I don't know. I don't know. At least you're sure about the gift. Yeah, I definitely give you a gift. Um, <laughs> yes. So I think it's important for us to one acknowledge what has happened in the past and how can you make things a little bit better mm -hmm. or much better. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, um, when you're planning for now, staying right now, but also recognizing what is it that you're looking to achieve in the future. Right. What are you doing right now to? Okay, you are looking maybe for. Um, successful spouse uh, financially. Are you also a financially uh, responsible person? Because I find most of for. us are like, you have all these big dreams. I want to be married to Dangote. My sister, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're sitting on a couch, you're not going to work, you're not doing anything. So what are you doing in your present to better yourself? Ooh. That's the most important thing. What are uh, you doing to better <laughs> Exactly, yourself? what are you doing to better yourself? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, as Joyce sa said, you are solely responsible for you. You cannot control how other people react. You cannot control how other people act. But at the end of the day, if you give your best vision to yourself, whether it's a job, whether it's a boyfriend, whether it's a family, and things didn't work out, you know that you gave it your best, you keep it moving. Mm -hmm. You keep it moving. I love to talk about other things, but I'll keep it pushing for <laughs> now, and I'll let you oh, continue. Thank you. Thank <laughs> yes. you so much. I love everything that you all have said. I watched, um, there's this story for those of us that... Uh, uh, religious. Mm -hmm. There's a story about Moses um, freeing, like God sending him to rescue or s free the to Israelites mm -hmm. right, from slavery. And one thing I learned, because there's a documentary on it that I watched, and one thing I learned from that was that a journey that should have taken the Israelites, I believe, about 42 days mm -hmm. or so, ended up being so much longer. Mm -hmm. Because they refuse to learn what they should have learned in that waiting period. Mm -hmm. That's right. They were stuck in the past yep. and the future. We want to see the promised land. You promised us that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we want to see the promised land. You promised us that. And because of that, 
resistant mm -hmm. to learn what God wanted them to learn in order to be able to successfully make that transition. They spent a lot longer in that wait period. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm guilty. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Honestly. Because sometimes I'll be doing fine, okay? Like, Patricia, you're good. You have your education. Life is going good. Girl, you're vibing. And then I probably would hear one auntie or one uncle said, but Patricia, when are you having that child? <laughs> and then you just... And it's like I get this 360 mm -hmm. of like, oh, yes, my biological clock yes. is ticking. I probably should get anybody anything mm -hmm. and or probably be a bit more patient here and stuff like that. And I think getting stuck in that time mm -hmm. or that process keeps me in a place that I probably should not have been now. Mm -hmm. Grounded. If only I had allowed God's will, God's pace, and mm -hmm. focus on things that I should be doing to yep. get to that next stage. Mm -hmm. So to round this up, mm -hmm. can we please just give a few tips to our viewers of key things, mm -hmm. realistic things mm -hmm. we can do well, in that wait period mm -hmm. to be present in the present moment. Just feel like, do you want to take Oh, a yeah, sure. <laughs> 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 well, I can only speak from my experiences, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's where I'm coming from. Um, a lot of things have changed since I've decided to understand a few things about life. Mm -hmm. I can't change the way you look at me. Mm. True. So the only thing that can help me stay sane or be okay with myself is how I feel about myself. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to do that, I have to learn about myself. I have to love myself. I have to accept myself. And I have to love myself mm -hmm. on a deeper level. Amen. In order to figure out, is she my cup of tea or is she my cup of tea? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And also not hating the process <laughs> because <laughs> it, gets, it can easily get out of hand. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to be okay with people switching up. People change mm -hmm. very often. That's where they're at in their Yes. Yep. So I have learned to be okay with people being good today mm -hmm. and being somehow tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But once you know yourself, it's easy to be okay with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? It's easy to be okay with family pressure. Mm -hmm. My son's 18 now. You have no clue wow. how much pressure then on my back, mm -hmm. you know, you started a business and it's going great, great, but like, there's no man. So it, it almost makes you feel like you're less of yourself mm. or you're not complete because they don't see this whole, Rich. like the, the whole picture mm -hmm. of like, mm -hmm. at this age, you're married, you have kids. And unfortunately, we're all not set up that way. Mm -hmm. All of us are not, we're not the same. Mm -hmm. We're humans, but we all have a past, mm -hmm. right? I have to constantly remember mine and stay on it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, you know, so I can genuinely love the people around me and keep my cup full. Because mm -hmm. if it's empty, I can't pour it in hers. Mm -hmm. right? You cannot run on empty. No. And my Beautiful. job, I'm a hairstylist. People rely on me to be you. To be fully me mm -hmm. so I can give them the support they need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If she walks in a salon and I'm miserable, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> like, no, that energy, not on me, girl. No. Not today. No. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the most important for me is getting to know thyself, loving thyself, and accepting self. Ooh, thank you. Yeah. Getting to know thyself, loving thyself, and accepting thyself. Uh, she, she preached to the choir. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> I think for me, that was the most, um, uh, you'll probably hear me say this so many times, I'm turning 40 next year. So I think that, that piece of loving yourself and understanding yourself is very, very important. Because I think when you're not contented with who you are, when you have not come to terms with who you are, it's very easy for people to sway you to whichever direction that they want to sway you in. Very true. Mm -hmm. You need to have a child, you need to have a husband, but nobody leaves those experiences in you. You got to know who is you or who are you. Now I'm talking about it. <laughs> 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 but I think most importantly, as an adult, also 
choosing a tribe that um, being very selective with not only your time, but also the people that you surround yourself with. Yeah, I was very, I, oh, I am, because I still am, I'm very blessed to have a family that's very supportive. Uh, my dad is like, I'd rather you have a PhD rather than get married. My mom, on the other hand, I think she prays every night, but <laughs> that, <laughs> that pressure, uh, just having my immediate family not like, when are you getting married? When are you having kids? Is not there. So for me, I'm like, if the core family isn't pressurizing me, I don't care what you think. Before, yes, you used to get to me but I'm like mm -mm. so making sure that you, you can't choose your family but the friends that you're picking mm -hmm. the people that you surround yourself are supportive of the journey that you're on and the other thing that I'll also and I kind of touched on this focusing on making yourself a better person um, at the end of the yep. day every day you want to show up as a better you go to therapy work out I mean you cannot wake up and complaining that you've gained weight and I'm talking to myself because I love to eat too much <laughs> and you're not doing anything about it so work on yourself and making sure that you're the best version of yourself at the end of the day mm -hmm. um, and if you're on that weight and you're waiting for that person at least they find you in the best version of yourself and the other thing that I think is taboo within the African community if you're thinking of maybe having kids um, there's other options too and this is something that I'm also uh, battling with because I'm a Christian but I'm like am I kind of like racing competing with God here there's things like adoption um, there's things like freezing mm -hmm. your eggs so start researching on those options and submit it to God if you believe in God submit it to God and um, yeah and ensure that your life is just full of options full of opportunities Stay at the present. The future will take care of itself. It will take Ooh. its course. Yes. Yep. You <laughs> all have touched every single corner <laughs> of that conversation. I hope you stayed with us right through the end of this conversation. What I hear myself and the lady say is that whatever you're waiting for, that mm -hmm. job, that child, that perfect one, that marriage, whatever it is you're waiting for, that thing requires a better version of you That's yes, exactly it. to yes. be able to not only to embrace but to be able to be mm -hmm. in that moment the version of you that you are now is for the this present is for where you're at the thing that you're hoping and praying for mm -hmm. requires a different version of you a better version of you so while you wait the world has not come to a standstill mm -hmm. it is not all dark and gloomy use that moment to get to know you to get to love you a little bit more mm -hmm. to take care of you be a bit selfish mm. in that moment and that's okay. so that when you get to the next moment you're not regretting what you did with your time during your wait Amen. I hope this really spoke to you one way or the other. And I hope you take the teen beats that we've shared with you today and use it to improve yourself one way or the other. I'm going to send a quick shout out to Al Maria Beauty Saloon and Spa on 13431 Fort Road Northwest. Her phone number is 780-885-5532. She is the beautiful lady who got my hair who gets my head on most of the time, and I really appreciate all of her efforts. We're so happy you joined us today for this episode, and thank you both for coming to have this conversation yeah, with me. Thank you Until so much for having me. our next um, episode, Sabe, Sandindin. <laughs> thank you. Sabe, Sandindin.